Hey, what's up, happy campers? It is 12.03, back for Thursday. Craig, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing okay. I just you got, got a little... Tough workout this morning, did you? I got a little tough workout, but I just got a little smoothie action in. I got some coffee, and I am ready to go live. Let's do it. All right, let's figure this out. There we go. There we go. So you can kind of see our shiny faces. This. Adjust this. You can see us both here. Oh, um, man. And get ourselves going. So, guys, we're back. Howdy, do you guys? Right, What's going on? TRE Live show, and we have actually a lot of things planned for you guys today because people have been sending us stuff, and we're going to talk about a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. And good news: if you send us stuff, maybe we will talk about it too. Yeah, that's true. So, this is kind of our first foray. Actually, we've been considering doing a little bit more in terms of gear reviews, and you know, we try a lot of stuff because we're runners, obviously. And now we're getting more into it. So we're actually going to shoot a review later today on the Ultra Escalante, which I've been running in for the last few weeks. And then we're going to get into some Hoka's and some other stuff in weeks to come. But look for more reviews from us or let us know what stuff you'd like us to review and, and we're happy to take a look. Um, we want to do not only just shoe reviews, but other you know runners, there's a lot more gear than one might expect if you walk into a running shoe store these days. Um, nutrition stuff as well. There is, guys. Um, and guys, give us a little shout out. We got a few people saying hi. I saw Jessica saying hi from Facebook. What's up, Jessica? I was actually peering over in the corner, oh, yeah. not because I was being rude or distracting in any way, but I was just uh, looking at my comments. I have my eye crutches on and I can't always see the screen super far away. Oh, okay, I'm going to be focused on the, this. I got to change this for a second and then I will be. We're going to do that. So, what's up, Ann? How you doing? Uh, Lance, Ariane, how are you guys doing today? Uh, Rob says, picture and sound is not in sync. That might be. Let's see if anyone else is having that issue. Um, if anyone is, please chime in. We're getting our sound and everything set up. It, it might be uh, a slow connection on your end, but we shall see. Yeah, I don't think it's a slow connection on our end. Yeah. Let's see how, how it works out uh, as we as we move forward. Cool. What's up, Lee? How you doing? Uh, so, as we are going to be talking about a few different things today, one of the things that we'd love to do is just give you guys some highlights on what we're doing, on what we're talking about and working on this week. Uh, and then we're going to get into your questions because that's what we're here to do is to connect with you and help you out a little bit. Uh, just a few things. We are in our first week of our Healthy Habits Challenge. What's up, Nathan? How you doing? Um, our audience says we aren't in sync. Hopefully, we'll figure that out. What's up, Ben? Um, we'll, uh, guys, we'll get that sorted as we go. Hopefully, that will sort itself out as we, as we move forward. Um, slightly out of sync, but not too bad. Um, we'll take that. <laughs> I think as a general rule of life, we'll take slightly out of sync any day. No problem there. Um, but anyway, guys, we're in our first week of our Healthy Habits Challenge uh, run by Elizabeth Inpine. This is a, a four-week uh, nutrition challenge where each day you have some new habit to work on. Today, they are working on meal planning, as I know. Um, each week, we're getting a little call going on and... Um, I learned a ton from Elizabeth yesterday and special guest pro runner Tina Muir. Uh, she's got a great uh, Facebook community and running podcast. If you haven't heard it, Running For Real, uh, you can listen to our episode. Uh, it was, I believe, episode number three or number four. Really fun. Um, and anyway, Tina's a wealth of knowledge and she's also not afraid feared of being vulnerable in any way and actually sharing some of like the issues that she struggled with that she was uncertain about and uh, it's such a great thing for you know really everyone to kind of relate to and connect with so we really love you know the straight talk around here um, not taking ourselves too seriously Tina does such a good job of kind of letting you in where a lot of people don't necessarily go and having really good productive conversations. So check out Tina. We're super psyched to have her part of our Healthy Habits Challenge as a contributor. Um, the way you get access to that is by being a member of our training club. If you are not a member of our training club or you don't know what it is, well, there's a way to remedy that situation. Totally. <laughs> we'll talk more about it. I mean, we can get really into training club series. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about it a little bit later. But anyway, there is a way to work with us a little bit more, not just to peer at our faces on a weekly 
YouTube Correct. little discussion. Um, trying to... Totally. We got people chiming in from the UK. What's up, Francis? How you doing? Um, yeah, Jessica, we got the sound thing. We know that there's a little sound audio uh, issue, but as I said, we'll always take a little delay over over anything. You know, what can, what can you do about uh, it? Let me see. If there's a delay, I'm trying to figure out how we can fix that. Yeah, we'll see if we can fix it. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my <laughs> resident, I got my resident tech support right here. He is uh, able to figure things out, you know, at least faster than than anyone else around here. Better, but for, I, than by, if you're by yourself, but not but I'm really good. <laughs> yeah, but I'm learning, right? I'm I'm slowly taking these things on, so it's it's really good. Um, so guys, we have our strength program coming out really soon. I am finishing up the touches on this. Uh, Kirk and I and the whole team have been working on this really, really hard. This is going to be an eight-week program where you need to have uh, gym access, but we sort of show you everything you need to do to um, you know, be successful in the gym. In the gym you're going to get uh, video, expert video instruction from us, breaking it down movements, showing you uh, modifications. We're so pumped for this because we know so many runners out there are looking for a strength program to integrate in with their own program, which is this perfectly set up to do. And of course, it also syncs up with all the stuff that we do too. Um, we got a few more people chiming in. Uh, could we go back to those uh, comments? Uh, so, guys, that will be coming out soon. If you're a training club member, we got a few more people. Oh, there we go. There we go. If you are a training club member, um, all right, Ariane, catch you later. Ariane, I got, we get to meet Ariane in New York City. That's pretty oh, fun. Lee's on. Nice. Lee is our newest member of the Running Experience team. She is from Florida and helping us with a number of things, including some of our customer support, but it's just been a part of our community for a long time. So, shout out to you, Lee. Thank you so much for joining in. And,. Uh, we have people from all over. Did I see somebody from Mark from South Africa? Awesome. What time is it in South Africa? Jeez. Uh, Aaron's on, another member of our team. Gary, gear reviews, run with dogs and chafing in Syria. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Gary. Uh, actually, this is episode six, is it not? It's episode, episode six, six yeah. Uh, but we did have an episode where I wasn't there, so maybe that's what you're talking about. It's almost not an episode if I'm not there, right? So. <laughs> We did have uh, Elizabeth and Holly doing a darn good job getting in there. Anyway, guys. All right, let's get to it. We got so much stuff to talk about today. Yeah. Um, all right, so for, you can hold that. That's good. So first of all, um, let's, talk about, let's talk about dogs. Let's do that first. Nora, where's Nora? Nora, dog. Nora. Here she is. Hey, all right, so this is our resident mascot. Can you see her? She's stretching. She's, stre she's stretching out right now. So I was on Facebook the other day and found that... Uh, a friend of mine, she, kn she knows that she's not this supposed to be on my couch. Oh. Come on, come on. Anyhow, so um, I found a post um, about running with dogs and a new leash that had come out, and it turns out that it was developed by somebody I know, and so I asked her to send me one, and what I like about it, we, so Nora, did you, uh, what have you done here? What'd she do? I don't know. So running dog leashes, I think, are, you know, an amazing thing because it actually, like, it frees you up to actually use your your arms in a way that is not um, kind of biomechanically wrong, you know, because yeah. if you're holding something, even, you know, I've found even recently when I'm holding my cell phone when I run that the left-hand side of my body is tense. Just that little bit of tension in your hands, like, it really translates to other parts of your body, and all of a sudden, this part of my body is, is stuck. So same thing with a dog. You know, having having a dog attached to your waist is just much better than having it attached to your um, upper body. Yeah. And oh, I can throw this on there. Hang on. Totally. So I I talked to Elise who designed this um, because she was having problems with uh, some of the usability of the stuff that was out there, and she's like, "Hey, I can do this better." And she, and she gave was kind enough to give us a coupon for our audience. Yes. So if you go to Amazon and you type in the should we go dog leash, and I'm going to show it to you here. Hold on. There we go. Okay, I feel like we're Guys, this is pretty cool. And actually, I was dealing with this yesterday because I was running in the city with Nora, which I normally don't do. Um, and I had to like switch arms every once in a while because my shoulder would get really stiff holding the leash. Wait, so how does this work again? And uh, the way that um, this... Uh, okay. Okay. There we go. 
Oh yeah, so this sinks around your waist. So yeah, it goes around your waist, and it's got like a nice stretchy cord, so it has some give. What I, it's not, it's not like really weak. It's it's actually a pretty tense cord because when the dog is kind of like a little bit jerky in terms of their pulling, you don't want it to necessarily jolt you. So that kind of gives you some give, and it's nice and thin, which is you know, the ones I've seen before are actually a lot thicker. And you know, I think that this is. Um, I, you know, from from talking to Elise, it, it works for small to large dogs. I think that you're, um, as always, if you have a dog that's going every which way, there's a, you know going to be an issue in terms of just obedience and, and that sort of thing. And that's true if you have it in your hand or not. But freeing your hands up kind of allows you to be a runner in that moment as opposed to just a dog owner. Yeah. And, and uh, guys, running long times with one arm swinging by her side, it sucks. Trust me. Uh, I, I don't like running on a leash for that reason. But uh, this thing is super rad because it frees up your hands. You get that natural arm swing. And you know, like us around here, we really like those natural unfettered mechanics so that everything is nice and fluid. So actually, we also have an extra one that Elise sent me that I was thinking we could give away at the end of our show. So, if we have any dog owners out there, we'll do a little drawing and, and send it to one of you guys uh, at the end of the show. That's cool. cool. Um, Jessica quickly asked our strength program, how is it going to be different from the strength mobility already included in the marathon program? Uh, Jessica, this is actually with uh, barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells. It's a whole new slew of movement that um, will be new to you guys. You know, working with box jumps, working with step ups, working with pull ups and a pull up bar. So we designed our current strength programs to be able to work anywhere. You didn't need any equipment, and you needed the bare minimum of stuff. And uh, we can get plenty of strong with our own body, but we also know there's a big demand for people who are in the gym and they want better stuff to do in it. And that's what this program is all about. It jives perfectly with all the programs that we do. So we're super pumped about oh, that. I like this. I'm just checking it out. Actually, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so check this out. So... So this so, part goes around your waist, right? There's like a loop and you can adjust it to however you want it, right? Like for whatever your waist size is. Then it loops on to this portion of, there's a like a clasp there. So this is the actual leaf, uh, leash itself. I don't know if you can see yeah. it there. And the thing I like about it is it's got this nice cushioned um, hand grip. So it's not just you attach to your waist. It's actually you can grab the grip and, and use it like a normal leash you know, if you're directing your dog and then at the same time, you know, you can have it attached to your waist. I mean, I actually suppose you could, you could even attach another leash to it if you wanted to, if you had a specific type that you like to use with your dog, but that's cool. So Rome says, Oh my God, I run with my dog all the time. And I always tied the leash to my hips. And I always wonder if there's a leash that is similar from what I'm doing. Okay. Well, Rome, you are in luck because if you go to Amazon and type in, should we go question mark dog leash you'll come up with uh with this exact leash and i think it's 24 dollars but with the 25 percent coupon it's a lot less than that so and hey check it out the designer is on here so if rome you want to ask any questions elise can pipe in and answer it um she's the designer of this and so she, you know she's a actually if i remember correctly elise is on her way to San Francisco right now to shoot some video and uh, basically do some video demos of the product now. It's a very new product and that's what we're offering a discount with Elise right now as she's launching it. So um, yeah, great. So I ho hope you guys uh, get a chance to try this yeah. out. Um, Nate's gonna have to let me borrow Nora for me to actually try this out. Um, any Anytime, anytime. The last time I went running with Nora, I tried to tire her out thinking that she would be, yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> she hired me out. She will just keep yeah. running. Uh, she's pretty and good. It was like, she runs like eight miles a day. Like you're not going to tire the dog out. Yeah, so yeah. anyhow. Anyway. Um, right. And also, should we say like, we're not like, th this is just oh. friends. We're not formally totally. affiliated. We're not getting anything for this with the leash. Um, oh. Just so you guys know. Yeah. This is the leash is, is just uh, a, a Elise, not to be confused with the leash. Elise is just a friend, and um, it's a solid product. That's why I had her send me, send me it. Um, I gave the first one I actually bought, um, and then I went on a hike this weekend and gave it to my friend Daniel, and so I had her send me two more. Um, we'll give one away, and then one of them is for Nora, our mascot. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we'll talk about leashes again in a second when we give that away, but 
We've got a few more things, guys. Yeah. You may notice I'm wearing this very sweet lime green shirt, the Run Experience. We've got another shirt made by Territory guy. Run, which is these guys right here. Yeah. And uh, we just got a bunch of them made, and they're getting whisked out to you if you ordered one. If you didn't get to order one yet. We will have more t-shirts and an availability coming, but we're doing them in batches. So that batch is gone, and then we will have another batch incoming. One, we love Territory Run because they make really quality gear. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite t-shirts. Um, and I was actually on one of their sunrise runs this uh, on Solstice, which was yesterday. Happy Solstice. I was up at 4.30 in the morning, 4.45. Not quite as What's that like? You. What's that like? Tell me. Nate, it's really dark, both in terms of light and just in general, like the feeling is a dark feeling. And um, anyhow, so I was there and they had a, a bunch, they give you gear when you go to, um, anytime you go to the, one of the sunrise runs, they have a little raffle. And so I brought some of it to show you guys some of the, of the, the territory run gear because I hadn't seen it, some of it myself. And I really, really, one of the things we liked about them and the reason we went with them is the design and kind of like the feel of the clothing is just awesome. So they have these really cool buffs. Um, let me see if I can hold this up. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess I don't think they go that close. Flip around because you yeah. can see the. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's it's just like this really cool material. You can use it around your neck. You can put it on your head. I'm not gonna do it right now because you know the hair, everything, and. Um, yeah, it's great for like, honestly, early morning runs. It's great because it keeps you just a little bit warm and it's not like a super obtrusive thing. You can just slide it over your arm or carry it, whatever it, stick it in a pocket. Um, they also have, so they have a bunch of these. Look at these designs. Um, love their design. I think they do an amazing job, right? This is another buff. Um, and they have a couple other products that I hadn't tried it. I haven't tried their anti-shave balm yet. Um, but... I also haven't had a reason to do it yet. I tend to only use this when I'm doing like longer races and yeah. stuff. Or if it's like cold in the morning, I think I'm going to be sweating and, and hot at the same time and cold yeah. and hot at the same time. So. Good for armpits. Good for the legs. Uh, these guys are the runners nipple. Good for every good for those places. Uh, Territory run is definitely, uh, you know, kind of of the mountains for the mountains type of people. Okay. So I have never used, um, they gave me these arm warmers, which pretty cool i've seen bikers use them and then you know shannon one of the um the friends of the company was that was running the the rate sorry the sunrise run was telling me about them and she says that she uses them in the morning like if it's cold out and she doesn't want to wear a long sleeve she's going to kind of adjust which i definitely sympathize with um in the morning a lot of times it's really cold to start out with and then it gets a lot warmer toward the end and you're stuck wearing stuff you don't want to wear so i'm going to try these out this weekend um but if you're into arm warmers, they're nice and light, and they're a great material. So. so we'll have to get the skinny on this because there's actually something called arm coolers, which are a similar material, a similar concept, and they're actually meant to keep you on the cooler side and just also block sun, and they basically kind of pull sweat away. They look the same. I'm not sure which one this fits into, but they're, they're sort of the same kind of concept except sort of opposite so we'll have to ask the tear to run guys what the deal is yeah i haven't tried them out yet so i mean they they feel like like good material like i would definitely um and i mean for run how would it cool you down i don't understand magic this, yeah okay well. <laughs> scientology anyway, i'm not sure these are going on my arm and um and if you if you're familiar with this product pipe in um i, I have not tried them out yet but i will try them out and maybe we can report ne back next week um but Territory Run, just want to kind of like give a shout out because one, we've enjoyed working with them. The shirts are obviously from them. They're getting shipped to you by them. And we hope to work with them again. Plus, they have you can check in your city. If you look up ter Territory Run on uh, on Facebook, they have the Sunrise Runs. I know the one in Portland is really yeah. big, but in a bunch of cities. And it's super great. I mean, it, it actually convinced me to start getting up early in the morning. So yeah. now... That's cool. Edward says he wears buffs all time during the winter. Um, says they're really versatile. They kind of are. They're like a little, like kind of like runner chic, you know, functional. I could like go shop in it afterwards and like get a coffee, and then you know I'm all good to go. All right. So I that that's it. I have for actually we probably have one more thing for the gear. We oh yeah, we got shots. one more thing for the gear. And guys, we're gonna start to take your questions, so you can start dropping them yeah, in. Drop the questions in while you're doing it. We'll talk about more. I know that Elmer just asked, uh, he just talked about uh, running his t first 10K last Sunday, 52.57. Thanks a lot for the great tips and tricks, Elmer. 
Boom. You're welcome. Good job. That is a fantastic first 10K. So we saw these guys when we were in Boston. This is called a hot shot. And I don't I wanted to bring it up because one, like it's an interesting and novel idea, and we are gonna be doing a, a more comprehensive review of it. But the so the the science behind this, there's actually a neuroscientist who is You a, just want to say just kind of generally what it does yeah, first. Sorry, it's a it's a cramp buster, or it is something that's meant to help you deal with any cramps that you have during a race or during a long run. If you feel yourself cramping or you know you're gonna be in like a really hot situation, you can actually have this before. And it's interesting, it's it's actually um, supposed to work in terms of, like there's a lot of science around cramping now that we think that it actually might be more of a a disconnection between your brain pathway and the muscle as opposed to like a lack of necessary hydration or lack of, you know, potassium or whatever people said before. There's actually like a lot of contradictory uh, signs about why, you know, we, why cramps ha- occur in the first place. Yeah. It's it's murky. Yeah, and, and now we're, we're in this period now where they think it might not be you know, hydration based, or at least not completely that way. So this is meant to, it, it has kind of like a, like a jalapeno, like a, it's hot, basically, it's pungent, like a, like, and sour, right? Yeah, it, it was cinnamony. Cinnamony? Yeah, I mean, here, I'll pop one open, we can try it right now. All right, we're going to try one open. I'm not cramping, like in our <laughs> video, but. Um, but anyway, guys, this is something that in the past, uh, there have been solutions of that are like super concentrated doses of salt, uh, and electrolytes that, that a lot of runners and triathletes would take. How's it taste? Woo. Let me, let me try a little bit. <laughs> mm. You took a ton. You drank a bunch of that. Yeah. Okay. So it tastes like, um, did you ever have jelly bellies, like the jalapeno type where it's like a sweet thing, but it's pungent? That's exactly what that's like. Yeah, it's tasty. So it's supposed to disrupt that pattern between your brain and the cramp, and that is how it works. As opposed to saying like, "Hey, we're gonna hydrate." It's an interesting. It's a really interesting concept, and it's definitely worth a shot if you deal with cramps. Here's the thing: I haven't figured out quite yet how to review it because I don't have cramps on a regular basis. So I'm kind of waiting for a like a long race or something. Well, we have just that long race in a couple weeks. So we're doing this race up on Mount Tam, um, Table Rock, half marathon, and it's got something like, I don't know, lots of feet of elevation in the first two miles. Yeah. So it's going to probably be like a 4,000 elevation day. And if it's hot as balls, like it is lately uh, out here in San Francisco, that being a technical term, we might be needing this a little bit. So yeah, this run has got me scared. I've been doing, you know... I've been climbing up the hill near my house every single morning and and failing at it. <laughs> In fairness, it's a steep hill. It's a it it's is. a super. It steep is. Hill. I call it the run to the clouds because most of the time, by the time you get to the top, it's it's all clouds. Oh man. Yeah. So okay, let's go back to questions now that we've drank the hot here. Let me close it up. Yeah, so let's, it's, let's, uh, let's see all the let's see all the goodness so back shot, in there. Um, I think we're gonna send some of these to our resident nutritionist uh, Elizabeth. She's gonna try them out yeah. for us. But just to oh yeah, just to give you guys some more specs, this little thing right here is 40 calories. It has 10 grams of sugar and 40 milligrams of sodium. For those of you guys who are interested. Filtered water, organic cane sugar, organic gum, Arabic, organic lime juice, concentrate, yeah, pectin. It's, it's basically that organic spice extract. That's what you've, the whole thing is in the spiciness of it. It feels like a cross between cinnamon and like a jalapeno. Very interesting concept. They were at the, at mile 20 of the Boston Marathon. We talked to a bunch of people there. Uh, they sent us some stuff to try, try out. I'm gonna try it out, and uh, and I'll let you guys you guys know what I think. But if you deal with stuff, this you know, if you deal with cramps on a regular basis, it's worth trying out. I mean, this is a totally different way of approaching that that problem, and you know, the whole thing just hydrate more. Like, you know, hopefully that works, and it's a good advice anyhow. But it may not fully solve your problem, and it's worth trying out. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, so we're starting to see some questions in. Garland just reports, I think, because Garland was on last week. Hey, guys, I had my wild horse trail half marathon this past weekend. I posted a pic to the Facebook page. Happy to report I didn't fall. Nice. Now preparing for the Stairway in Heaven trail marathon. You really are taking this whole like stairs, tripping, falling thing. Like You're, you're tackling it head on. Well, well done, Garland. That's Appreciate fantastic. That. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Edwards, it's an interesting product, but unexpected cramping during issues in my marathon last weekend. Couldn't figure it out if it was electrolyte deficiency or a function of the road. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't, you know, and, and this is a, a cursory like o- overview. I don't think this is not like 
hey, I don't need to hydrate. Obviously, this is not like a, a I think the hydration and the electrolyte balance thing, it's a real thing. I'm not saying that it's not. But if you are dealing with problems, you're like, hey, man, I'm hydrating and, I, and I'm taking in salts. I'm taking in, you know, maybe salt tabs like I do on long races um, and I'm still having problems. Try it out. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a very interesting concept to, to look at our adaptation as athletes, as a neurological um, process, not just a, a mechanical muscular one. And guys, there's also a huge component to, you know, our, our technique in this way and the way we've trained our bodies to move. Uh, a lot of way things to think about with crimping is that, you know, there are certain muscles that are doing more of the work than others. Uh, and, uh, they're starting to freak out a little bit. So one of the ways you can kind of control this is getting back into good posture, relaxing where you need to be creating a little tension where you need to, and getting back to those good mechanics. Cause most of the time, when I see cramp, uh, cramping either for myself or with athletes that I've worked with, um, there is always an association with just that end of race where I'm starting to bleh, just start to fall apart a little bit. Totally. Um, do you want to go back to our other little cool screen on the on the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, totally. just to show the primary? Let me see. Keep showing you guys the. Yeah, I like that one. It makes oh, us look so right. fancy. It says episode five. You're totally right. I'm going to change that. We're going to change that right now. So we got some other questions coming in. Um, let's see here. Moosey, Moose Leader says, how many times per week should a non-elite runner do hills, fart licks, et cetera, particularly someone who's an older runner later in their 40s? You know, in all honesty, like... I'd probably start with like one session yeah. and then and honestly if you are you know in an older category definitely do like if you think about your training there are things that are riskier and there are things that are less risky speed work like a lot of hill training those things are a little bit more extreme efforts and it's not that they're bad or they're good it's just that with more extreme efforts you're always at a higher risk factor so you know, one, definitely ease into it slower. Whatever the, the prescribed, it, whether it's from us or somebody else, ease into it, check yourself, and don't feel the need to be like, throw in three, like, again, this is the adaptation thing. You wanna talk about that? Like, you need time to adapt. So taking, taking in three speed sessions a week, especially if you're older, not gonna help out, because as you get older, as we get older, I should say, at this point, I turned yeah. last week, um, we our adaptation response is going to be a little bit slower and so you need more time to recover in order to get the benefit from that speed session or that hill session or the long run session any of them yeah you know recovery is going to take a little longer when we're older and and that way like in, integrating a little bit more cross training or a little bit more strength training is going to be better you know you may found that like say you've been running for forever uh in your you know 20s you probably could run five six days a week no problem as you start to get a little older some of you guys can still do that some of you it starts to feel a little painful so you're going to get more bang for your buck running three four days a week and doing some other stuff yep. in there as you go through uh, and the other thing is like hey what are you training for if you're doing um you know some hillier trail racing runs you might want to do a short fart like session and then start doing your long trail runs not necessarily killing yourself up the hills but getting that exposure if you're someone who's getting ready for some flat fast 10ks you know you might want to do fart like on the hills just for a little strength and different stimulus but then be doing some other tempo work um on the uh, on the flats or on the track and and the thing that we always go back to are you spending as much effort and and time really earning the miles, meaning are you putting the time on injury prevention, on mobility, on strength training? Because if you're not doing that, and it becomes especially true as you get older, if you're not doing that, you you are setting yourself up for a lot of you know, higher risk, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And Edward is absolutely right. 40s is definitely not older. Wait for your 60s. You know, like I have to say, physiologically, there are some things where the aches and pains come in. But like, seriously, I have been schooled by so many yeah. 40, 50 year olds in Ironman and running and elsewhere. They're studs. You guys are studs. Totally. Amazing. And at the same time, you know, when I meet people who are 25 and I'm like, I'm not making any excuses. As long as I put in the work, I can still do it. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. No age excuses. So guys, uh, if you're just chiming in, uh, we have been on for a little bit. This is our weekly live show. We are coming at you live every Thursday at noon to about one. We are giving you little updates, talking about some different products, and we're taking your questions. Um, what was I going to say? 
I was going to say there's uh, Craig's Weird Kitchen Thing of the Week. Oh, that's right. Our favorite piece, Craig's Weird Kitchen Thing of the Week. So Craig's got something for us oh, this week. We're really Craig, excited. I ever. So I I was thinking about this over the weekend because this thing came up and I was like, man, this is going to be a great little bit for our live show. Here it is. So over the weekend, where is my, where's my bottle? Where is your bottle? Craig has been taking different culinary classes. Okay, so... This is a mason jar, and I I put my smoothies in this in the morning because it's nice and big, and I have like 15 of them. And I was like, why do I have 15 of these? And I realized I once had plans to like have lots of jars in my house that were filled with food and was delicious and healthy, whatever. And I was like, you know, I should learn how to pickle things because pickling not only for a bachelor life like me is great because it's just food that sits there and doesn't ever go bad, which is a real problem. And it's healthy. It's vegetables and fruit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. It's what every woman likes to see when they're, you know, scanning the San Francisco social dating apps. You know, can my future man pickle yeah. and preserve it's goods? Funny. It's funny you should say that because I was on a hike with a number of um, friends you know, also a number of women over the weekend and telling them that, yeah, I'm super excited about this pickling class tonight. It was not the response that I was thinking of, (laughs) I should say, but check this out. So I went to, uh, there's a girl named Jenny who owns a company called McVicker Pickles, uh, which if you're in this area, I'm sure you can find in your your store. And she runs a a class which is about how to pickle stuff. First of all, pickling is actually a super cool, interesting thing to do. There are actually two types of pickles. Um, I didn't quite know this. There are... Uh, your kind of traditional vinegar pickles, which is what you get at the store that are like um, like pickles, like cucumber pickles, right? And you can see I have some cucumbers in there. And a vinegar pic- pickle is basically um, a salt, water, and sugar, sorry, salt, water, sugar, and vinegar mix. And you dump the vegetables in. You can put any kind of spices you want. I put, if you can see, a lot of red seeds in there. Uh, yeah, look at that. These are like really like jalapeno peppers and whatever. It's going to be hot because uh, I like that. And so this is great. I always thought pickling take a long time. This is like three days. And you could, we could probably eat these right now, but I'm going to let them sit for a little bit longer. You basically throw things into this mixture and let it pickle, and they become awesome. That's basically what it is. <laughs> they become awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited. I get to benefit from a lot of Craig's uh, food things. Whoa! Yes. Is that cabbage? Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, what is cabbage? Made? Kimchi? No, it's not kimchi. It's a uh, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Oh man, dude, that's like my second. Well, actually, one of my favorite condiments for totally. hot dogs. So sauerkraut is even easier than the other thing because there's no vinegar. Sour. So this is the second type of pickle, which is a fermented pickle, which basically means it takes a little bit longer, like you know, a few weeks. But you basically put a salt, a specific salt water uh, ratio in there. And you just let it sit at yeah, essentially room temperature, like 70 degrees for a while. And I put a bunch of spices in there, some turmeric, which is why it's yellow. And it's just kind of cool. I, I think it's amazing to like, you know, I, I believe a lot in like um, making food at home as much as possible. I, you know, I don't get to do it all the time because I'm constantly out and about. But uh, this is like a great thing. You can you can take stuff that from the farmer's market and throw it in jars and it's and it's good for months, you know. Uh, this, if you can it, which I did with this, which is kind of a hot heat process. This is actually, we, we went, went through the canning process, so this is sealed. This is actually good for a year um, and it huh. will last for longer than that before it starts to degrade. So, um, super, super. So, cool. on coming apocalypse, we all meet at Craig's house. For our hot pickled <laughs> carrots. For one jar of pickles, you get one carrot, and then you're out of luck. Uh, what's up, Tushar? Chiming in from India. How you doing? Um, Gary asks, or uh, who was it asking about? Uh, yeah, Gary says, is there any risk of sticking to a certain distance and therefore not being able to progress to further distances? Hmm. Are you? I guess is Gary asking like, is there going to be like a five k, and you have, you're not going to be able to progress to? I I mean, look. Everybody, especially as we get older, we tend to go towards longer distances. That's true of a high schooler. Like if you go to competitive uh, ath- like track and field athletes in high school, a lot of times when you move to college, what happens is you move up in terms of, you know, I did this. I went from the 800 miler to a 3,000 steeplechaser because you basically try to hold your conditioning, but, but um, 
And granted, that's not because I was yeah. going to get older. It's just because I wasn't fast enough for the 800 mile. But as you get older, a lot of times, like, we'll start going longer yeah. instead of faster because that's what's available to us. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting, Gary, there's the, the opposite risk of people progressing in distance too quickly. Okay. You know what I mean? They're, they're jumping up. They do their first 5K, and then they've already signed up for the half and the full. So, you know, taking some time to get better at those shorter distances and build strength and uh, technique and improve your speed, I'd say... Uh, anytime we do anything, it doesn't matter what it is, but you know, after six to eight, you know, 12 weeks of, of that, our body kind of soaks up all the adaptations from it and we're not necessarily going to change anymore. So changing the stimulus, whether that's speed, distance, intensity of the training itself, that's always going to be a, a good way to go. Uh, we've got Emma over here saying, I'm 42 years of age and training for half, but can't seem to get my speed up at the beginning at the be I'm not sure if that's at the beginning of the race, hoping she'll maintain the speed all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what you do. You start on a ramp and you go down the ramp and then you'll be able to. So this, Does that work? This is an interesting point and I just want to point this out. Um, a lot of people when they ask this question, they'll start off with, hey, hey, I'm this age, I'm this particular age. And it is a relevant thing, but I think what is even more relevant than your age if you're 42 and even if you're 52 or 60, what, what is relevant is like what is the type of approach that you're taking into your training. So whether you're 42 or 22, if you have an, an approach of, hey, I'm just going out and running three miles every day and I'm going to jump into a half marathon, I did one long run, like your results might be proportioned to your age, but they're going to be largely the same stuff and you're going to deal with similar problems. Like now the 42 and 52 year old might have, a, you know, a, a shorter leash in terms of like not getting injured that sort of thing but in general the thing that we want to concentrate on is not like how should I do this for my age it's how should I do this for my body which is you know am I uh, do I have mobile hips do I have mobile ankles am I biomechanically like paying attention to like the way I move and if you are then you're on a pathway towards getting better if you're not you, there's just more risk yeah you know Emma a great place to start is, you know, with implementing simple things like putting a warm up into your workout, uh, working on your breathing, um, adding some fart lake or speed intervals. I think so many athletes do get stuck into that plateau in the half marathon because they just start to train for their half marathon pace, which is this cruising speed. And don't get me wrong, you're going to spend a lot of time here, but you also need to spend moments above that. And if we never spend moments above it, we're never going to get there, right? So adding some speed and then and then just what Craig was saying, making sure your mechanics is really good. Um, and the best way to do that is to work on your strength training, to work on some injury prevention, mobility work after. It's, it's a full-time job being a runner. There's a lot to do, you know, but uh, totally. you can sneak these things in in little five, 10-minute segments and uh, it, it shouldn't disrupt your schedule too too much absolutely all right we got more questions coming in let's see what's up todd how you doing kevin says watching from south africa that's awesome kevin kevin we're in south africa i used to live as a student way back when at uh, i was in rhodes university in grahamstown in the eastern cape so i'm curious to see where you're coming in from um nicole asks hey training for my first 5k any advice you can give me um yeah. eat all the donuts you can before you start one donut for every K I, this is this is a, this is a horrible <laughs> advice don't do this uh, have you tried our 30-day challenge oh yeah that is actually much better advice uh, and we always like to ask this um, you know who of you guys are listening here are are training with us currently or are even aware that we offer training programs because uh, Nicole we've got built some things built that would actually be perfect for you in that first 5k yeah, I mean, we are a primarily a training company for runners online, and we have a mobile app. The mobile app has tons of free content. It's free. Go download it from the store. Leave us a review. It'd be awesome. And then we have you know access through the mobile app and on our website. Actually, we can show it to you. Hang on one second. I'm gonna let's do one better. We can do that here as we're going through. Um, this is gonna take a second. Yep, Nicole, we're getting you that information right now. We're showing you that we have a page that you can actually get to our uh, site and, and purchase uh, programs. We've got a great month-long program called the 30-Day Challenge. But what might even be better for you would be our training club, which would be an ability for just low monthly fee to have access to all of our programs. And you could 
do our 30-day challenge, our half marathon program, our beginner running program, our soon to be released released running strength program. These are all video-based programs. You get a little taste of what this is from our YouTube videos, but built into the Bam. program itself. Look Whoa, at look at that. Okay, cool. So I'll go through the things that this is our internal page where you actually have access to it if you are, actually anybody can go to this page, but you have access to these programs if you're part of our training club. Now, at the Run Experience, we have a number of different programs that you can see here. We have nutrition challenges, but we've wrapped it all into one big thing, which is uh, the training club. And it's pretty easy to get to the training club. Oh, what did I do? Hang on. There you go. There we go. Uh, okay, so if you go to the Run Experience and you go to our training plans section, you're going to see our our training club. This is it right here. It's 30 bucks a month, $29.99 to be exact. Um, and the, 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 basically, there's two choices. One, weekly running tune-up. This is just workouts that we give you every week. It's like a three times a week. You can kind of sprinkle them into whatever training you have. It's a good way if you're not in a specific running racing plan or it's not you're not like going to follow something every single day. It's a good way to kind of like toss these into your workouts. There's strength, there's mobility. We put a bonus in there every every week. Um, and and it's, a, it's a great program. This is where we think all athletes should reside if they are not – in one of our other programs. And sometimes people do both because they're using the workouts as kind of like supplementary. Now, we also put a lot of our kind of newest thinking in there. Now, the training club is our main offering to you guys. And we took all of these programs, which we were, you know, the, if you buy them individually, each one is about roughly $100 a month. You know, like 30 day challenge, I think is 150. But for 30 bucks a month, and you can do it in one month, which is a hell of a deal, you get access to all of the programs, and then you can go in and out and progress through them because you know, it, we tell everybody you need to have a foundation first, and then you can kind of move towards a half marathon, a marathon. All of our programs, the thing that is different about them, and I'll show you one of them. How about what, the half marathon program? Let's go to that one. Are you looking through the comments? Yeah, I'm just looking at through some comments as we start to go here. Okay, so the half marathon program, this is an example. If I go into, let's just pick a random day, day 23, this is in week four, um, and you have access on your mobile phone as well. We are yeah, on. Gary says the training app is awesome. You can see that we have this posture breathing and pulling workout. And, you know, what we've tried to do is enlighten the normal spreadsheet that you would get from a normal training plan, yeah. even from the very best coaches that we respect a lot. You know, what we've done is try to fill in all the stuff that athletes need to do from a habit perspective and a movement perspective before, during the run itself to make sure they have even better mechanics, to make sure they're stronger. Because if you do those things, you are injury free. A lot of times with regular training plans, the coach either assumes you're doing it, which is a dangerous assumption to make, or they don't necessarily know themselves in all honesty. And then that can be even more dangerous. So this is an example of a uh, technique day and we try to, you know, even on every day, no matter what you're doing, we give you guidance on like what you should be thinking about on that run. So you're always going out the door with a purpose and you're coming back, not just more tired, but you're coming back more skilled and more, more of an athlete than when you started. Our, our purpose in this and, and kind of something we sneak in there is, yeah, you're training for a half marathon in this case, but you're actually educating yourself on how to train yourself better and what you need as a runner to be healthy and to go faster. So... Um, this is an example, uh, again, available on our mobile app as well. You sign in and you get access to this. You can sign in every day and then basically get your workout for the day. Every day has a video. It has a breakdown of, of what you're doing. It has an advanced version here um, if you wanted to, if you're a little bit faster. And then we have, then this is the most important thing. We have um, the warm up and all the movements, right? So if we're doing here like high kicks and lateral lunges, exactly how to do it. And the important part is it's not just Nate just going through the movement. He explains this is how it, it uh, really, really relates to your running. And that's the key thing. If you're going to do strength training, if you're going to do mobility and preve injury prevention work, the key is, are you relating it to your running and is it directly affecting how you move? Yeah. So that's all that, that is with every one of our programs. And that is for the half marathon program, marathon, beginner, 30 day challenge, is kind of like a foundational program. Um, totally. Yeah. And so guys, so check that out. Um, now, meanwhile, we got a bunch of more questions and we'll talk about this. If you guys want to talk more about the program, we'll kind of leave this up so you guys can check it out. Um, 
as we're going here, uh, Running High Colorado says, hey, running the Leadville 100 in August and working on nutrition right on. We got Kirk going out to, Kirk Warner, our coach, going out to the Leadville running camp this weekend, actually, if you want to meet him. I've tried 10 different kinds of gels and just can't do it. Any suggestions or food items with similar benefits? Oh, Number so one great. thing, ditch the gels. They're gross. Uh, just, just don't, just say no. <laughs> so, okay. I, I'm going to give a counter opinion to that. I, I don't mind gels. I've actually, I, I, I tended to sometimes making my own, which with was brown rice syrup with like vanilla added to it or different flavors added to it. The thing is, is the longer you're out You've there. You've made your own gels? Yeah. Who, do, who makes their own gels? This is crazy. He just he just like throws that in there and just sails right by as if that's not weird. But um, but we actually have some great videos on our channel from our resident nutritionist, Elizabeth Impine. There's an ultra running race nutrition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I was thinking about the one where Kirk made um, the rice yeah. cakes. Share that one too. So guys, we have another great video. We've got a few nutrition videos on our, on our channel. Let's see if we can, uh, we can show this to you. Hold on. It's running real slow because we're uploading video to you guys. So this is kind of, oh, here we go. Marathon training nutrition. Uh, there's also another one in our ultra marathon section. We have a bunch of nutrition stuff. Yeah. Um, but check it out. This is, you know, obviously it's on YouTube. It's free. Um, and in this one, I'm not going to play this video because it's going to be too much. super slow. Too much video. Yeah. Oh, good. This is, <laughs> that's Kirk. Kirk shows you how to cook cats. Yeah. That's he starts <laughs> always with the cats and the dogs. He he lives in like a zoo basically. And anyhow, he goes through this great. Here, I'll just show you. He goes through this um, process of making his own uh, power food, so to speak. Adds bacon, his eggs, and like you know syrup and and peanut butter and like makes his own stuff. I have actually not tried this, but I mean to because it looks awesome yeah. and i love the fact that he's using whole foods but you know what like gels totally can work it just does it work for you it is a you know it's definitely sweet and like i get sick of the taste after a while so you kind of have to like figure out how long it's raised what yeah. can you deal with and, but like in all honesty more there there's gonna be it depends on how long you're out there you know for the long for the shorter the race the higher intensity when blood is nowhere near your gut and you're just looking for that quick sugar fix like a gel is great because it's all you can digest but when you start going longer um, you know, you're racing for four hours, six hours, eight hours, your heart rate's a lot lower. Yeah. You can actually handle uh, different types of solid foods and, and that's just going to actually sit better in your stomach. Your blood sugar is going to be more stable and sort of managing blood sugar spikes and crashes is really, really going to be important. A short race where you're not really eating anything except one gel to spike your sugar at the end, no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're like starting to eat 12 gels, it's just going to tear your stomach apart. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it, there's, there's definitely, um, a limit to how many of those things you can take in and how many things like just, you know, packing that stuff, you know, it is, it's a, it's a glucose spike and, and you have to kind of make it be a judge of like how much you want to handle that during a race versus, um, trying some other alternatives. And there's so many alternatives these days. I mean, you know, I got started running when they were like when Power Gel first came out with that. It was like there was one company that made that stuff, and now you can, you know, you can make your own. You can have homemade solutions. There's so many other solid food options yeah. you can check. You can do. Check out our friends over at Generation. You can they make yep. a great product. Uh, it's this super starch, yeah. slow release, uh, doesn't spike your blood sugar, gives you kind of this like slow drip of fuel. Um, and we're really just scratching the surface here. But as I look, we have 10 minutes left. Do you know what that means when it's 10 minutes left? Oh, the rapid speed fire. round. Speed round rapid fire where right, where Craig and I are held to relatively short responses uh, as much as we go. Last week was not that speedy. It wasn't. I'm terrible. I'm practicing. That's why we're doing this. Okay, okay let's see. Uh, are you going to do the Facebook feed? I'm going to do the... Yeah, we'll go back and forth. Okay. So I see Alex's question. Um, um, so since I've dealt with shin splints and ligament strain, would that possibly mean that body would grow strength later in the future to prevent this again? Uh, in, in short answer, yes, we need to get, uh, some more specific accessory work in those, um, I know I'm looking elsewhere in those calves and, uh, shins. I need to get some short term mobility work to iron out those kinks and I need to moderate my running in the meantime. Sure. All right. We have Sarah Geary from Manchester, England. Ooh. Welcome, Sarah. Oh. What is your view on foam rolling before a run? Uh, foam rolling. Good even better than foam rolling is getting like a specific utensil. I like lacrosse balls and we have a bunch of different shapes. Sometimes the foam rollers can be kind of weak, but 
foam rolling before run. Usually we do a lot of foam rolling after the run. We do mobility before the run. I don't know if your question is, should I do foam rolling or is it before? If it's before or after, I would do it after and I would focus on mobility of your joints beforehand. I concur. Emily says, hey, it's Amy from Pacifica Runners Club. I think you sold me on the new strength program. Awesome. We're actually, I think with the Pacifica Runners Club, we're actually doing an in-person strength session with them in uh, September. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. A real hoot and a holler. All right. That wasn't a question, but Noah McAllister, is it bad to stretch before you run? No, it's definitely not bad to stretch. I think that we like to advocate a little bit of mobility. What I do and, and what we advocate, a little bit of mobility, a little bit of warm up. Get your blood uh, kind of warmed up by by running for a little bit, and then I do a little bit more mobility after about five or ten minutes. And when I say mobility, do you want to do you want? Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to specify mobility uh, versus just say static stretching? Yeah, so stretching is this kind of you know gym class 1980s concept of like stretching the mu the muscle, and that's what you think of. Do you, oh, I'm taking the muscle, I'm stretching it. That is not what our our purpose is to have more mobility in our joints so that our body works properly. So we think about mobility. Is it is it actually putting you into an extended position for your muscles? Yes, but the purpose is to get you full range of motion of your joints. That is what the focus is going to be um, for before you run and just in general. You, you don't really care about stretching your muscles. You don't want to be Gumby. What you want to be is someone that uh, has full range of motion for the capability of yourself as a human. And this is a much longer answer than rapid fire should allow for. It is a little bit, but stretching is complex. Yes. So it, it necessitates that stuff. Tushar says, I'll be running a 25K race around mid-July. Recently experienced some severe chafing inner thighs. Um, stalling my training. Any suggestions on chafing recovery? Recovery? I don't know. Recovery. We've got a little um, anti-chafe bomb. I'd yeah. say that's something that is really helpful to wear. There's a few different products out there. Uh, Body Glide makes something that can help in the future. Um, I would say uh, make sure that you're working on hip stability and single leg stability. Basically, what happens is that when we lose that, when we run and get tired, our knees start to collapse in towards each other, and then we start to see even more chafing occur. Of course, everyone has some depending on their legs, so I'm not saying that, no, you're going to get rid of chafing altogether, but a lot of times it gets worse when we get tired. So body glide and make sure your hips are really good. Yeah. Uh, I changed from gels that didn't work with me, and I changed it to Tailwind. I haven't looked back. From uh, oh, great! Cool. Yeah, Tailwind's great. We talked to them actually when we were at uh, at Boston. Yeah. So Tailwind is like a new optimal uh, hydration beverage that gives you just the right amount of electrolytes to keep your body going. Guys, we've got five more minutes. Rapid fire questions. Anything you need, post away, and we will answer. Michelle says. In hot weather, 95 plus, should we hydrate with something other than plain water? Uh, in short answer, yes. We should be doing something with some electrolytes in there, preferably something even before we go out the door, right? And then making sure that it's not just the hydration during the run itself, but it's like the whole day. Like right now, it's been hot all week here. Um, we're just like sweating all the time. I was sweating in my bed sheets the other night. A really easy hydration hack. I've been doing it every night before you go to bed. And granted, I, I can handle this because I don't have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I drink a glass of water before I go to bed. I drink a glass of water before I get up. Not a huge jug, just a glass. All of a sudden, you're starting off the day and kicking off the day uh, and ending the day with a little bit more hydration. Hydration is really important, but also it is a thing that happens over the course of time, not just before you run, during your run, or after your run, or before, during, or after a race. It is, a, it is teaching your body to... It, to be hydrated. So if you're in a constantly dehydrated state, you can't just throw back water and expect it. You're, you know, your body gets used to a certain set point. So it is a thing you need to kind of practice throughout your training. Um, no worries, Karen. We were talking about different leash strategies with uh, with dogs. And if you guys are just like, we're actually, should we do our giveaway? Oh, let's do the giveaway. Let's All the right, giveaway. let's do the giveaway. Okay, so how are we going to do this now? So quick recap. We have a good friend of ours, a um, good friend of Craig's, who has recently designed this uh, handless leash that he runs rugs. So you take this little harness, yep. this goes around your waist, yeah, you can, and then you we have this... It kind of spring-loaded um, leash here so that the dog can pull on a little bit on it's it without like nice without hurting you. cushiony, grippy handle. This is the brand. It's called Should We Go. 
and you can find it on Amazon. And hold on, Boop. there we go. If you put in the Run Run 25 coupon, you get 25% off. So they uh, that oh, I didn't tell you guys that is only available. I think she said to the weekend. This is it. She's just launching this, so the coupon's only available for a couple days. But if you know, it's pretty cheap, guys. I would recommend try if you have a dog. For like 20 bucks, why would you not have? If you run with your dog, I don't know why you wouldn't do this. Um, Plus, this is a yeah. high quality, classy leash, and yeah. I've been around a lot of dog leashes, so totally. I think I, I like the product there. Yeah. So, anyway, check that out. Check that out. Okay, how are we gonna do the giveaway? Um, usually, what we do is we pick a person who's live. Actually, tell you what, um, I want everybody who wants to be in the giveaway to type in a comment and in the comment to put a hashtag. Um, should we go question mark or don't put a hashtag just say should we go question mark put it in the comments and if you do we're going to choose one of you guys right now to i'll just do a random number generator and one of you guys right now and we will um send you a dog leash i love that we got it right over here yeah throw a little thing in there uh, I'm taking advantage. Wondering how you run with two dogs. Well, you could get, uh, a, you know, the dogs with the multiple yeah, harness to totally, set up. Totally, you can you can totally do two dogs with this because if you see right here, this is just a class. Just buy two of these. Now, granted, if the dogs fight, you're not going to be able to run. That that's not going to happen. But you can buy two of these. Just attach. You can either attach two waistbands or just attach it to to uh, to one waistband like this. You put two of these together, and you're good to go. I mean, as again, this is assuming that your dogs get along and, and you, you run with them and you know how to do that. But um, this would totally work for two dogs. Yeah, there we go. We're seeing a bunch of people. Go. All right. Hashtag should we go or just put should we go question mark. That's the name of the company. We're going to do a giveaway here in just a couple of minutes. I got to figure out how to do my random number generator. And all of you guys will be entered to win. You know, we have discovered something. It's very... Uh, insider running people don't know about it but it's called dog doping what? and if you use your dog while going uphill uh they can pull you up there a little bit and uh it helps with your strava prs it's kind of good that's awesome all right so we got you know lynette michelle then we got a bunch of people in here okay we have tons of people that are entering this little contest here because we have people on facebook and on youtube so guys we're getting this number in uh one second we'll pull it together and uh, give you guys that access to what you need all right, um, let me count how many people we have. All right, oh, holy cow. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. 11. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. Bunch of you guys are interested in the, in the leash. We're so pumped about this. Okay, you only need to do it once because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Uh, for I'm that okay YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> just one vote you can't stuff you can't stuff the ballot box here <laughs> but i appreciate that you're excited um uh, let's see 15, okay and how many on facebook we got a few here while do while they're doing this uh okay, cool and then i'm gonna just pick a random number generator yep guys we're giving away a uh dog leash for you guys uh that wraps around your waist and doesn't have it if you are interested in getting it for yourself there is a little coupon right up on the screen. You can put that into Amazon, and it is only good through the weekend. Yeah, for all you guys who who, who uh, want a leash, the 25% the coupon works right now. This is kind of cool. We've never done this before. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Wait, wait one Here. second. I'm just going to count this out and see who won. No, uh, results are pending. Are pending. They are forthcoming. Oh, We're consulting our right. judges. Edward Wickham. Hey, Edward, congratulations. Edward Wickham, you are winner, winner, chicken dinner of our... Is, tell us if you want it, Edward. If you think the dogs are too small for it, we will send it to somebody who has a dog that is sizable. But otherwise, you're the winner. So just type in here if you want it. <laughs> I'm okay, YouTuber. That's cool. Don't worry. We appreciate your enthusiasm. But hey, guys, look, it, this is a... a, a less than a $20 decision. If you're interested in it, let me throw that page up where, um, let me see. 
Let's see, and then I'm gonna go right here. This is the leash on Amazon. It's 24 bucks. What is 25% off 24? You get it's 19 dollars. Uh, is that right? I think so. Yeah, not too bad. Nope, that's wrong. 18 dollars. I just said that. I didn't really do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I already got one as you can see. Um, but yeah, go check it out. Uh, we want to support Elise. I think it's an awesome little invention that's just a side project for her and she is doing a great job with it. Um, grab it soon though. Cause I don't know it's either Saturday or Sunday when that coupon goes kaput and then I don't have any power to give it to you guys again. So, um, hope you guys love that guys. It has been amazing. It is one Oh three. We're three minutes over, but we're three minutes late. So it's good. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. We actually really, I love, this is one of my favorite parts of the week. I love doing this. I will bring you something that's not pickles next week for the Oh, yeah. Version. Maybe a little sous vide action. Maybe some sous vide action. You don't even, okay. We'll yeah. just, I, we'll wait till the next one. Anyway, they don't even know what it is. Anyway, guys, thanks again. We will see you next week. Thanks, guys. And now the fun, awkward part is the we start to close this part. thing of closing this, this down. Is the clo- closing down song. The, clo- the closing. The closing down. <laughs>